and sings a mother twice a night. Hello, please leave a message after the tone. Hey guys, it's Lou Poe with Screwing Good and Heart. So I got the advanced copy of the show. I would say thank you, but you guys sent me an entire hour of you guys reading the Bible. At first I was confused, but then I thought, you guys are artists and maybe I didn't see the vision. But then I listened to the show. You guys are saying, Yod tranny? There is so much wrong with that sentence. I don't know where to begin. Whoa, who the hell is Father McFeely? I mean, do you know how many lawyers the Catholic Churches has? <sighs> Again, it's Lou. Just, just give me a call. Yeah. They say I walk like a king, talk like a king. You can ask around now, say the same thing. They chasing the fame, they all want the name. The thing got was running through these veins. Say I walk like a king. Talk like a king. You can ask around now, say the same thing. They chasing the fame. They got what the name. The thing got was running through these veins. Make way for the king. What is up, everybody? This is your boy Manny. And your boy Rashad Dyson. Oh, today we have a special guest. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'm Junior, also known as Chef Junior. Oh, okay. Chef Junior? Because he be cooking in the kitchen all day. That's right. Food, right? Food. Oh, okay, okay. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Sure. I thought he was whipping that work. I don't know. I don't know. No? I don't know. You came in here thugging out. He goes, yeah, bro, I'll be in the kitchen. I didn't know how to respond to that. I was like, <laughs> talking about bacon pies. Like, uh, uh, I'm confused nowadays. If he, when he now. said I'm baked, I'm like, I'm, are you just I mean, I'm... <laughs> I'm only half baked, <laughs> right? He's exactly. like, I got that cake. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what are we doing? Exactly. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, well, it's good to have you, man. Good to have you on the show today. Is going to be very interesting. We're going to talk about a little bit of everything. What's up, team? Man, good to have you back. I, are you are you back for are you back for good or are you just terrible trend? Yeah, because we the all, ones we did, and we, twos. You had us all sad that I'm leaving. <laughs> Put it over there with you. Yeah, I will. Uh, no, I'm just here because people are just uh, calling in sick and being lazy. Uh, so uh, I was one of my them. last day was Wednesday, and I, yeah. I can't get my last day. It's it's okay. So I told my boss, I go, if you guys call me next week, I'm going to ignore the phone call. Yeah, it's okay. It's because you love us. It's yeah. fine. Hey, be honored. This is my last show at Fishbowl. Is you guys? Sure. Sure. Right, right. That's right. right. Until they we were call all me back. last week. We were like, oh, we won't see him no more. Mm -hmm. I played that one song. What's that? The, uh, oh, it's uh, been a long time. Yeah, yeah. Without, Without you. But no, I'm here. Uh, they can't get rid of me. I just. I'm, they can't get rid of you or you don't want to leave. That's what I want to leave. I, I have something lined up and they just won't let me leave. Really? Yeah. Every time you try to get out. They, they pull you right back, back in. They pull you right back in. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm at, guys, just for this episode, then I'm out of here. Yeah, that's so all right. We appreciate you. This is 10. 10? Oh. Episode 10. Wow, man. 10 episodes of the canceled You just named this episode, episode 10. No, he was shot. He's the brain. I'm telling you, man. He's the brains, bro. He's the one that remembers all this. I was. We were just talking about, me and Rashad were talking about, do you remember not too long ago we started our first episode, you were nerve. We were nervous. You couldn't mm -hmm. even tell we were nervous, though. Mm -hmm. but we were so nervous. Just to be on 10 now. <laughs> episode 10. And sober. High school rager. Uh -huh. But before we start into all that, man, how was your day? How uh, your week? My week was good, bro. It was it was really busy uh, with the new job, new position, that kind of stuff. Uh, it was kind of busy with, you know, I'm doing I'm doing a lot more stuff for the show, trying to shut up. Uh, by the way, um, we decided we're going to break up the podcast into uh, into seasons. So. So this is going to be uh, the end of actually the end of season one, and uh, season two we're going to have we're going to have more things. We're going to have more explosions and fast cars and drugs and, more. and women and and we we had that in the first season. Didn't no, we? we couldn't afford it, but we're going to have somebody in a in a in a wig, probably you or me. Okay, I'm thinking it's going to be both of us. Don't I'm, judge us. I'm, I mean, it's probably going to be you. I mean, you've got the legs for it. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my boy, George. And hi, Heather. She's so nice. Hi, guys. Hey, now. How's hey, Jennifer. Going? She's watching. Aww. But, uh, yeah, how about you, man? Uh, Chef Junior. Chef Junior. Hey, how was your uh, week? My week's been good. I've been uh, applying at different jobs, trying to get back into the school district. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just moved back up here from Hillsboro. 
Okay. So once nice. we get into the story, y'all, y'all, you'll see why. Yeah, you'll hear why, why I'm back, why back here in at Arlington. You could be doing so much else, man. Fucking kids. I could, <laughs> it's, and, and you're right. I'm trying to move up to college a little bit. Yeah. They're, they're mm-hmm. knuckleheads, you know. Oh, we were man. when we were in high school. So. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, crazy. How did we, be, me and you, become friends? I, I, I was mean. Uh, me and uh, Junior, I think I added I added you a while back without even ever knowing you. Yes. But I was inspired by your story because you had a um, by feeding homeless, right? Correct. Uh, yes. And I was I wanted to do something about that. I was like I want to join you and, and go do something like that because I, I again I want to do more, more than what I'm. I want to be so busy that I can't even sleep. But mm-hmm. I feel like you know I like being busy. Yes. It, it, it's a lot of work. So uh, usually on a Saturday, we'll feed anywhere from a thousand people mm. and women, children. And it was hard at first when you I started. You probably see me up there. I was just there for the line for the food. I, <laughs> I'm not even homeless. I was just like free food. You weren't even there. Come on, get in line. Vente. Trae la familia. Vente. Get in line. That's, they do. <laughs> they're feeding and don't no comas. Don't come. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Is, is that why Amon had me like had me go in line one time <laughs> and to get a place? She's like, no, don't need it. I was and like, no, what? And they, and they had me get in line again. Yeah, yeah. Like, Amon, yeah. like, what? Why are we feeding? Why are we filling up the van? You know, as Mexicans, <laughs> as long as it's free, we're there. Amen. <laughs> hey. But yeah, no, man. My my week was crazy, man. I, I had to. Um, my mom's very sick right now. Shout out to my mom. I know she's. Shout out to mom. We've been taking care of her i know i um things happen for a reason you know i haven't worked this whole week and but i've been taking care of my mom and thank you so much man he's been he helped my mom too and you know like i said it's been it's been hard but she's better now she's getting better so much familiar so So, yeah familiar uh i don't Mm -hmm. why you got it what why what's up with the voice what Uh, so much familiar (laughs) he does that he always likes to do a smoldering thing when he says family (laughs) family (laughs) But that's yeah. how I normally say it. That's how you say it. But yeah, no, that's uh, mm-hmm. we we were doing that. But I mean, like everything has its seasons, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's not hard all the time. But um, yeah, man. So uh, what else was I doing? Uh, not a, a lot of nothing. <laughs> really, just working out. I get to you know hit the gym. And but what are some things before you hit? Do you, do you do before you come to the station, Rashad? So before my my prep, like right before right before I get to the station, I gotta listen. I gotta listen to some no nonsense hardcore <laughs> candy pop, bro. What? You know what do you mean? K pop, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. I gotta listen to my BTS, bro. I gotta, <laughs> you know, I gotta get in there, bro. Okay, your show is officially canceled. Now. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, I would my, understand my if you Gundam style. Now. You know. <laughs> no, I uh, actually. Uh, or like right before the show, I, I try to I try to get into the mood. Like I I'm usually doing my last bit of like research or whatever, and then you know I listen to some some good hip hop like soulful soulful music yeah. to get me in the mood to get you in the mood. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what about you know, um to do this thing? Well, me you know people don't what believe do do? this, but I like to hit I, I every day I'm in the gym. So right before I come to the show, I'm at the gym. So from the gym That's I come true. straight here. That's but it, it helps me because I'm more. That's my way of meditating to stay calm, to to be in the you know present. And then when I get here, it's when everything's. Out I of can control. tell the difference when you don't hit the gym before you before really the can. show. I really, really can. <laughs> He's all like nervous and stuff like that. He's like a like he freaking chihuahua that. and stuff like that. My mom the other day said, uh, and, "Pero por qué estás gordo?" <laughs> like, <laughs> Shut up, mom. Ma, <laughs> it's, it's muscle fat. It's different. <laughs> I told you it's muscle. <laughs> no, mijo, estás gordo. Right. I got a good question. Yeah, yeah, bájale, no estás... I got a good question for you. You're in, the, you're in the gym every day. Yeah. Where's the proof? Ah, oh, damn it, B. Oh, yeah, if it's not on Facebook, it's not true, right? That's right. right? No, I actually, you know what's crazy? That even in, on, on that, I do work, uh, upload workouts. Really? But it's because for people that don't know, like, I, I met so many people. They'll be like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Or I'm embarrassed to ask for help or mm-hmm. too shy. So I like to do little workouts. Just some simple that you can see me do and rewind and just watch watch what I do and you do the same. All right. You're so. a chef, right? You're yes, chef. I'm. Don't yes. feed him. All right. Mm-hmm. What? He has enough food in him already. So. <laughs> well, the I'm proof sorry. the proof is is when he's curling ninety pound dumbbells. Like, like I've really? seen this guy. 90? Yes, yes. 
That's just, yeah. that's just his workout. All right, now I'll be more surprised when he gets to 100, all right? I can. <laughs> he can. That's can. I'm saying 90 is his workout. Like, yeah. he's not, that's, that's his max out. Like, just, that's his, again, he's doing his reps. He's doing I, these when 90s. When I'm in the gym, I look buff as hell, but when I'm, like, out here, I look like a blubber ball. No, just I'm, you, I'm you kidding. Tra- I, I see what you can do. You can yeah. you, you can get your leg higher than I can. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, we, it's oh, impressive. yeah, he's stretching, we, too. We, that's right. We went to... Hooters. Is it Hooters? Hooters. Mm. And, and I, I, I just told him, hey, hold your hand mm-hmm. out. Because I was trying to show him my no. cake. He goes, oh, hell no. And I mm. told him, I said, Rashad, hold your hand out. Mm-hmm. And he held it out. And I just, wham, like I threw out like a kick. Because I was trying to mm-hmm. make a point about martial arts, you know. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, I didn't know you could move like that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is shocked and, when you move like that. Everybody's always like, but you're, you're like fat. How can you move you're like, like that? You're big. Why can you do like, that? Why are you so big then? No, like, it's, a, it's impressive, and I can admit No, that. I'm, I'm yeah. like, well, I used to be small, but like I said, I, there's actual footage out there where me doing the splits of two chairs or me uh, are training. So, like I said, I, uh, I was skinny before I was this big, but they have me moving every day. It's a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, mm-hmm. a routine that I have to do every day, and Again, it's the food, man. Yeah, <laughs> I got yeah. an alcohol and drinking. And I'm just saying, you take your shirt off, bro. You look like Bolo. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, don't hit back. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but our chef, man, good to have you here, man. But yeah, like we, that's what I said. We we became uh, good friends after that. I think I, I talked to you once or twice, but you never replied. Oh, <laughs> it was on me. Yeah, 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 yeah it's all you. But um, yeah, that's what intrigued me. And then I saw you were a chef. I saw. Um, how long have you been doing that? 30 years since the Marine Corps. And, wow. Uh, but before the Marine Corps, I was doing it like at a restaurant. Remember Nifas that used to be right here? No, I never Yeah, that. Nifas is a Mexican restaurant that right. was that was statewide for a little bit. I've heard and, of it. Yeah, really? and there was one right here by Six Flags uh-huh. at one time. But they ended up all closing down. But that's where I started as mm-hmm. a bus boy, worked my way up. And I found out I love the food industry. Mm-hmm. Went to the Marine Corps to be a club manager. And then... They you said, no, the you get to be the cook. You got, <laughs> so, you got, that, you got the whole bouncer look. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole bouncer look. But the cook, you look so mean as a cook. I can't, I can't see you as <laughs> one of those Steven Seagal. <laughs> I was about to say, exactly. He's like, no, man, I'm just a cook. I'm just, <laughs> just a cook. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> but but you, do you still want to continue that, or you just that's something I, you want to put? Uh, that is my passion. passion. I really mm-hmm. do love it. I I don't consider it work. It's too mm. easy. It's too mm. much fun. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, just for me, it's second nature. It's, you know, that's I mean, your passion. That's right. my passion. Yeah. And when you love so. it, it's not a job. That's yeah, true. You know, true. It's not. That is true. Well, we're going to have to come over there and just bother mm. you. Whenever you're cooking, I'm going to just show up. What's mm. up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, nah. that's every day at home. Yeah? Mm. Yes. Because I saw a video. I know you uploaded a video on how to uh, cut the meat or something like that, right? I, yes, uh, I, I think... started uh, teaching my students how to barbecue. Oh, okay. And we uh, at OD White, and we started winning competitions. That's how I made it on the news was really? with my students, yeah, being first place. That is awesome. So you yes. teach too? I mean, you teach cooking classes. Yes, I I'm did. gonna have to take one of your classes then because oh. I, I don't know how to cook at all. Yes, man, I can tell you, I when got I, sick by doing a uh, egg, cooking when, an egg. I got food poisoning. When I when I first met him, he couldn't even make ramen noodles. <laughs> like I'm serious. <laughs> like, like, like one time, like his mom left out of town, and like it was just me and him, and he was like. Hey bro, uh, how, how do I? How am I supposed to make this? Like, <laughs> like make what? These, these noodles. I was like, bro, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I'm, I've never, never done that before. I'm just like, <laughs> bro, bro, for real. Yeah. I was like, I'm well, a little spoiled by that. Like, I've never had to, you know, in the kitchen. My mom is in the kitchen. My mom is actually she that's owns what she the wanted, kitchen. Yeah, yeah. that's what she wanted to be is a is a chef. So she's always like in the kitchen cooking and. I picked up a little bit of things, but it's not, I'm not confident enough because, I, like I said, I did eggs one time and I got food poisoning. I don't know how. I don't even know. I just but added you this. Just, I added that. And that's how fine. I learned first of all, watching my mom in the kitchen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. sit on the stool while my brothers and sisters outside yeah. playing. They're like, go outside and play. No, I want to watch you cook. No, my mom's yeah. an aggressive teacher. Up. Like, if I'm, like, if she teaches you, like, my mom, how can I put it? Like, you're, you're, you know, you're a chef. Like, you no longer have to measure. You just know by looking or. Pinching. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. My mom does so, it. She's like, yes. yeah, uh, okay, this is enough. I'm yeah. like, my mom like, go get a pinch of salt. And I'm like, mom, where's that pinch <laughs> measurement? <laughs> no seas pendejo. I never <laughs> seen it. Like, yeah, get up. 
she calls me like my mom is like a drill sergeant. She'll cut you out, and yell at you for doing that, and uh, <laughs> or not knowing the names, or you know. So <laughs> she probably did, and she'll swear to God, like I'm not even like that. You're oh my God, like, yes I, she I, is. She I'm is. Very I love sweet. her to death, but you're very she's sweet. just like that. <laughs> But all, it's not my fault you're stupid. Like, all right, mom, whatever. Like, you get it from your dad. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. That's, like, well, I would ask him. I would Ma. ask him. Ma, where's he at? Love you, Mom. But, um, yeah, no, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn now. Like, I want to, uh, I think that's one thing that's losing it in, a, in a lot of, uh, well, just anything. Women don't cook no more. Men don't know how to cook. So, I'm trying to. Everything is order it out. Yeah. Everything yeah. You, you order out. And so, but there's something uh, like, I don't have a like, un, like the passion for cooking, but I do like to prepare food. You know what I mean? It is something different from, from when you, you know, you actually put your hands on the ingredients versus, well, I'm going to just dial this number. You know? Yeah, my wife does the same thing. She pulls it out the freezer and throws it in the microwave. She likes to put her hands on it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I put my hand from the freezer <laughs> to the microwave. Oh, I can't get me in hot pocket, bro. Right? Don't, give me, don't tempt me. I, hot pocket's on fire. On point, bro. I can make it hot pocket now. Don't get it twisted. But yeah, it took you two years from burning a- the microwave. <laughs> but <laughs> hot pocket just exploded but all over the microwave. everybody that knows me, like, I think people that will talk, you, you, you'll talk about me, they'll be like, man, that boy does not know. He would die. <laughs> I would freaking die. Yeah. So, yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm definitely going to take you on that. Like, I'm going to just show, show up to your, all your classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I saw that. Time. I saw that you were teaching. I'm like, man, I, I found you as an interesting person. Like, I feel like you do what we do, but in a different way with food, mm-hmm. which is out teaching, reaching to the people, and helping people. And honestly, I don't feel like you have, like, like you, I never seen you, like, how can I put it? Like, me and, me and Rashad talk about, <laughs> we know people that, uh, and you're a, a church member also, right? Uh, yes, a, pastor. A, you're a pastor. Ordained right? pastor. Oh, no, wow. Awesome. I know I was cussing yeah. like a sailor. You mean hey. sailor? Hey, I'm a Marine. First. Hey, 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 right. hey, I but, hey, uh, hey, God knew what he was doing. Yeah, that's hey. what he's doing. <laughs> well, see, that's what he, said, <laughs> he said, this boy needs some help. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Go. Did we already send them? No? What are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, no, we have, we have friends that are involved in the church because I'm not a church person at all, and I'm not going to lie to you. But it's not because I don't, I'm going to say I don't believe in the church. It's not the, it's the people. Yeah. And people are like, well, you're not there for the people. Then if you're not there, if we're not, then you can't teach me. It's kind of the same way with, like, as a fighter, you got to be able to whoop my ass. Not what would I want to learn from you, right? Yeah. So you got to lead by example. Yes. And a lot of these people that I've seen that I know, and they're probably, you know, they'll watch this later or they're watching. They'll be in the church. But as soon as they go help people out, they're all, oh, look at us. Look oh, at me. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yes. 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 I'm helping the homeless. Yes. I'm like, mm. that's just me standing here. What's over there? <laughs> Woo. You know, but and I can't stand that. That that to me is like, unless you're doing that, is to get more people. Hey guys, come over here. You know, uh, such and such address. We need you to donate, donate pencils, donate food, donate whatever you can. That's the only time I can see. It's like, oh wow, maybe we need to do our part. But you don't do none of that. Like when I when I saw that, it was just the new news coverage. Just what I saw. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like I was inspired. And they by just it. happened to they just happened to find you. It wasn't necessarily that you were trying to broadcast yourself. Oh yes, never. doing it like. You, I always I always say that the more people post that they're doing stuff, the less that they're actually doing. Because if you're doing stuff, you don't have time. No, you don't. Right? Because you're you're mm-hmm. busy you're busy feeding thousands of people when you have time to post about it. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. If you notice most of those pictures, have you ever seen it on that? Uh, I have that. Pat- Pastor Junior's homeless ministry page. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one taking the pictures. It's everybody else because right. I'm busy cooking. Exactly. I'm busy showing somebody how to do it or or talking to someone who's in the line. Mm-hmm. It's always I'm busy. I don't have time to do it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So someone else had to do it. Right. And, yeah. And that's what we respect about you. That's what when I saw that I was like, okay, that's something I already. I'm like, okay, this this guy is already different from everybody else. Mm-hmm. But now that I, I just I just found out today that you're a Marine, so. Man, tell us a little bit about that. How was that experience? Or it was like a frat party. Yeah, you know, you work hard and then you party harder. Yeah, yeah that's the, that's the lifestyle we lived. Oh man. Yes, yeah, so I don't think I calmed down until until I got out. Really? It took, it took <laughs> quite a few years after that for me to calm down. So, what made you change your ways, if I may ask? Like, what made you go into that direction of being a pastor? You, 
I, I got just tired of, I really wanted to be a teacher and I thought that would change, change things. Plus being a pastor, just ministering to people, it just reached out to me. I was already leaning towards doing the homeless ministry and then finally it just all came together. It, it happened to be the college we went to, Arlington Baptist College, right. had a great teaching program. Right. Then also the pastoral program, so it just hit me. I was like, okay, we're meant to be here. Me and my mm. wife went to back to school at the age 35. Mm. She was 30, and it there started our career back in school. Right, right, right. And so we started, after that, started teaching. At least I started teaching, and she, she soon after that started this not too long ago, maybe four years ago, started teaching. But I was teaching really? in 2016 is when I started. Right. And it's right after I came out of a coma. What? So, yeah, some of those pictures in there, I had barely came out of a coma. I had passed away for seven days. I was dead on full life support. Wow. Yes. And, uh, and when I came back and what these tubes were in my mouth, they don't know, diabetic coma or something, really? you know, something to do with diabetes. Well, you busted a pot seven yeah. days later. I'm alive. Yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> right. Dude, you're Boom a miracle. All, right. all these mm-hmm. pretty nurses coming into my room. Right. I didn't have my glasses, so I couldn't mm-hmm. see without them. So I was like. He's on. He's on. Oh, hold on. I got to I got to feel. I got to feel. Oh, 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 sorry. Your wife's <laughs> like, he doesn't change. <laughs> no. Yeah, I swear to God, I can't see. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. <laughs> Mister? Uh, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but the worst day was seven days later. I woke up and they gave me milk products, and I'm lactose intolerant. So, oh, no. It wasn't a girl nurse that helped me. It was a big old six foot six guy nurse that helped me. I was so embarrassed. Where was the nurse that was here last exactly. night? Exactly. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? What happened? I'm sorry, bro, but I got you on this one. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry, worry about it, buddy. I, I got you. With the sick <laughs> buddy, please, he's like, I got you, bro. I was like, oh, oh, man. I'll stay don't, in my shirt. <laughs> no, oh, don't worry. I got your sponge bath ready. So, <laughs> let me ask you a little bit. <laughs> so let me ask you about that. When you passed away, was there anything that can you can remember? Did you go on the other side? Did you nothing, talk to Jesus? Nothing. Be like, it was Lord. just total blank. This, it's, really? like, it's like I was just asleep. And the next thing you know what, I woke up. It's like you close your eyes one time and you and open your eyes and you were. Seven days later, tubes in my, going down so, my throat. Nurse wow. comes there. And I and I'm asking like I'm trying to in my head I want to spell Y but I couldn't spell W H Y all I could write was a W and mm-hmm. barely write the W and I couldn't remember how to spell words. Oh wow! And so she figured out you know I was pointing to the tubes down my throat and pointing mm-hmm. towards the tablet that I was saying Y and she goes mm-hmm. we don't know you were just in here and you were dead <laughs> and mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're on life support mm-hmm. and uh, two days later they were suggesting to my wife to unplug plug all the life support mm-hmm. and uh because they didn't think i was coming back wow but it happened to be on that second day in the evening i started getting some function on something some mm-hmm. one organ started to function oh, really? wow. and so because of that you know then later on organs and organs started coming back to life but the only thing keeping me alive was machines wow yeah, that's that crazy is, so can i ask you this and maybe i don't know how you can i hope you know i mean this in the most respectful way no um uh, uh since you died and you didn't see nothing, then what? Why was your face so strong then? I already knew where I was going when I died. That's all. You know, mm. just uh, the faith. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's right, just right. Me, I know. You know, for my fact. So I just know. And like my mom was crying. Right. And I was like, "Why are you crying, mom?" She goes, "Because a mother is not supposed to bury their children." Mm. And I said, "But you know where I was going." I wasn't worried about it. Right, right, right. Because I'd already been so sick with diabetes, pain, and stuff right, like right, that. Right, right, So, yeah. you know, then it came to the recovery. They're like, you're never going to walk again. You're never going to you're never going to talk again. You're going to be in a wheelchair. But you oh, see wow. me come up yeah. the stairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they said, you're only going to be as good as you fight. So, every day I oh, you fought. You came out swinging. Yes. Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's yes. what's up, You came man. out throwing chingasas or whatever. Come on, mm-hmm. life. I got this. Yeah, because yeah. when... um. Like, when, you know, me, if you would ask me, like, I didn't see nothing, then, you know, I think that would test your faith. Like, well, you didn't, you didn't have, like, you know, some people have, um, what do you call it? They, they see their spirit walk in the hospital. You see everybody around. You didn't see none of that? Like, none of that. None? None. Wow, that's... None. That's crazy, right? That is crazy. Like, yeah. honestly, like, that would have been like, okay, well, what can you tell me from the other world? You know, because yeah. people will be like, oh, the, 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 
You know, mm-hmm. I saw Jesus and he was the most beautiful. I, I saw this earlier today. That's why I say this. He was, he was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And like his teeth were so bright, you know, this and that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what I would say to Jesus if I was, you know, or, or God. Like, hey, God. Cool. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. He, he would have been. Uh, <laughs> Slap me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> You've seen a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said, that, that I think that is you know crazy that you know you come back and your faith is even stronger because I a lot of people now I talked this to my brother Rashad I, I mean this guy me and him we go back and forth a lot on this situation because a lot and you said you said I already know where I was going a lot of these people that go to church said the same thing but I know where they're going yeah you know yeah. what I mean because and I, yours is story yours is different though you lead by example that's one thing I liked about you that you weren't just like well first they always talk about how the Christian. I'm a Christian. Like, that's supposed to mean something. Oh, no. You know man. what I mean? <laughs> if you have to brag about it, then there's something wrong with your walk. Thank you. Facts. Yeah. Oh, facts. You know what? Somebody should be able to say, you Hold know on, let what? me start tagging these people <laughs> on here. <laughs> yeah. Some of these people should be able to say, you know what? I, I bet you that dude's a Christian. Just by the way he acts, exactly. the way he talks, the difference. Well, say yeah, it louder for the bitches in the back. <laughs> <laughs> because, like I said, like I, we've had people, and mm-hmm. I know people, like I said, I would call them out in a heartbeat. To me, it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, they'll be like, uh, they were, oh, you're going to hell. They told me, like, oh, you're going to hell. Like, well, how do you know that? I'm hey. like, because they go to church, they think they're not going to hell. I'm like, first of all, you walk past all these homeless people and not once did you ever look up at them yes. and give them the same respect. Or you're embarrassed to be seen to talk to them or don't want to feed them or, you know what I mean? And, and to me, is but you go to church every Sunday. Yes. I mean, these are the same people that will walk over a homeless person to go to church. And I'm just like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. I did a, and when we were in youth group, we were doing a play, and I was mm-hmm. dressed up as a homeless person. <gasps> and I walked, you? I walked into the church. Mm-hmm. They did a story on you. I was 16 that. years old. Oh, no. <laughs> and man, I was in a trench coat. I had a, I, and I couldn't even grow a beard back then. I didn't grow a beard till I was in the huh. Marine Corps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, yeah, yeah. Same, same, Corps, same, right? bro. I was in yeah, like same, bro. 21, 22, couldn't grow same, nothing. Same, man. Really, you know, man? Dude, I mean, my beard. Mm-hmm. I had to put on makeup. Right. So I put on makeup to make myself look like a beard. Not- and the church people were going to tackle me because they thought I was going to attack the pastor. Because I walked through yeah. the church and wow. sat in the front pew. And-, and then they realized it was me. Mm. Uh, well, I, I like that. Wow. So, yeah, you're right. If you yeah. see a homeless person coming in, the first thing they're going to do is judge them. No, well, that's yeah. a lot of times. Like I said, I don't... But, I don't I'm sorry, brother. But, but if they're really Christians, that means they follow Christ. As in... What would Jesus do? Jesus, yes. Jesus didn't. We, for those for those that are Christian and those that have read read about Jesus, Jesus didn't hang out with rich people. No, mm. Jesus didn't, didn't hang out with the of. with the with the clergy and the priests and nothing like that. He never hung out with them. He was no. out there in the streets. <laughs> he was out there in the streets. The, the homeless, the tax collectors, exactly. Everybody, murderers with the thugs, the, whores, the thieves, the everybody. exactly. Yeah. And, and this, that's who he hung out with. Yes. So. Come on now. He's, he's, he was with them goons. He was about to was at, Exactly. But I say this to say this. We both say, and I, I'm going to speak for both of us on this, that mm-hmm. that we have friends that, like I said, do that. Now, I don't care about your religion. I think I have the problem is when you push it on somebody. You know, mm-hmm. I think to me it's like it doesn't matter if you're gay, you're weird. I mean, I just call you a weirdo and go on about my day. And, you know, live your life, right? Mm-hmm. What we're supposed to do is, hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. was so, but uh, God, oh, man. I, oh, uh, it, so it's it's basically is that, you know, it's like you said. Like you shouldn't have to tell me mm. that you're Christian. You should be like, hey, that's a good dude. Right. He he loves his family. He loves his community. He takes care of himself. He takes care of the people around him. Okay. Well. Now that I see that he's a he's a good person, hey, hey, bro, why why are you such a good person? Right. And you'll be like, well, it's because of my faith. Oh, go. okay. Yeah. Well, tell me a little more about your faith. See. That's how we're supposed to. Exactly. I don't know. My opinion no, and no, probably you, my brother's no, opinion. No, you got it. I no, feel no. like that's how we're supposed to go about, you know, preaching to the public. Not like, oh, well, you're going to hell if you don't follow follow the same same beliefs as me. And we had that said right? to us. Uh, we had that because uh. I'm going to interrupt you right quick, brother. Go ahead, bro. And, and, and 
it was like, well, if you don't accept, you know, this and that, Jesus, you're going to hell. I'm like, look, listen, not everybody, just because you're on this path all of a sudden, and it does, some, some people are on it too hard, which is like, I know the real you. And to me, again, I'm going to get I'm sure you've seen it with new Christians. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get into it today because you, I need someone to, to, to see where we're coming from. And, you know, like mm. I said, it's not to attack you, uh, but I just want to share this story with you because I think there's different types. Of, of people like us, we don't sit there and say you're a Christian. I'm not. I, I don't know what I am. I'm spiritual. I do believe in God and I do believe in Jesus. But I think that approaching a person is not telling them. It's by what you said. I'm going to show you that I'm a good friend. When you need help with people, I will help you. If you need a shirt, I will give you my shirt off my back. And I've done it. I've actually given up my food and given up to homeless. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I know where my next meal is coming from and they don't. You know, I've yeah. said Wait, and but I you didn't put it on Facebook. How are people supposed to know? Because yeah. it's it's not for me. And that's why I always say there's a lot of stories that's, that only he's seen. Mm-hmm. You know, like one Same time with I was, me. I was sitting mm-hmm. at a McDonald's and the homeless dude was knocking on the window of the car. And he was and my my buddy was like, oh, man, get the F away from this car, this and that. I said, yo, chill, fam. I'm like, what's up, man? He goes, you know, well, can you just buy me some food? I haven't ate in days. And this dude was literally in tears. I said, you know what, man? I haven't touched my food, but you can have my food. Take mm-hmm. it. He was like, "You serious, man? You're willing to stop eating? You're hungry?" I'm like, "Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, like the food is meant for everybody. You know? Yeah, literally, I've given my shoes to someone out there. Yes, and I didn't have shoes. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, you ain't got shoes. I'm like, you know what? Here, take mine. I got some more in the car. Don't funny worry about story it. That was well, not even funny, but I gave all my clothes in my closet. I mean, that's why if people see me with one <laughs> pair of black jeans, <laughs> that's the only thing I had. I swear to God. Yeah, he literally. Yeah, you yeah, literally I did. I just bought two joggers, and that's. That was the most mm-hmm. expensive thing I've bought. Mm-hmm. But I gave up everything in my closet. The only thing I didn't give away was my workout clothes. But I, all my jeans, everything was brand new and tags. Mm-hmm. So if you see some fly-ass homeless dude down street in <laughs> Fort Worth, I mean, uh, downtown Fort Worth, yeah, that's for me. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and that's what I mean. that if you, like, uh, I have buddies that part, they're atheists. I have friends that don't believe in that, but that's okay. I show them that, hey, I love you regardless. You're my brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Whether Because we don't know. We, I mean, you know, I was counting on you to tell me, like, oh, yeah, I talked to Jesus, but mm. we can't have that. Nah. But, again. It's okay. I, I, I talked to Jesus, too. No, no, not that one. That's Jesus. Oh, oh that's <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll me, uh, he'll me drop my transmission. <laughs> He's a good guy. But good guy. you know what I mean? And, and, and that's the thing that it's like, we don't judge. Like, whatever your lifestyle is, that's fine. But I'm going to show you, you know, I feel like that comes from love. Love is God, right? So if you're going through something, let's say that one of my friends is going through a hard time and he just, one of his parents passed away, that's your time to step in and help him heal. Uh, one of your buddies, uh, his house burned down. It's your time to step in and give him a home, share a home. It's your time. If he's going to starve and he went homeless. It's your time to feed him. That's mm-hmm. how you show God exists, by showing people that don't believe, by making them believe. And true story, hand on the Bible, and I say this and. Uh, I have I have some of my friends. They are stri- were strippers, but I went to a strip club. And, I mean, when I went, it's weird because my friend, my best friend would get mad at me because I would sit there and have convers- deep conversations with the strippers. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's my witness. <laughs> and I would That's be like, laughing. And I would be like, hey, why are you doing this? And she was like, you know, she's all like trying to like, what? And she'd be surprised because I said, why are you doing this? Well, she would tell me like, well, you know, I just, I just, uh, I just don't have no one to take care of my kid i have to make money i said oh okay well what are your what are your dreams outside of this mm-hmm. what <laughs> like why are you mm-hmm. asking me this no, i'm just asking i just want to have a friendly conversation and next thing you know they're sitting down my friends will be like dude you're not supposed to change their life they're here to dance <laughs> i'm like well i mean maybe no one's ever asked them no no one's ever asked them and you can see that that they will be like wow and again i'm proud to say this probably some of them have changed their ways and they're great, like, you know, doing their own business and have, you know, adventures, which I'm very proud of. But, again, no one's ever taught them the way to be like, hey, why are you doing this? Are you okay? And I have other friends that would be like, we went to a restaurant. He would be like, oh, I, I can't be here. You guys are scumbags because <laughs> the waiters, like, what was it? Uh, uh, probably- we went to, uh, uh, you know, yeah, uh, one of those. It's not not like Hooters, oh, but it was something. No, no, no. We went... I remember this because no, <laughs> no, not you. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! No, 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 no. I said scumbags, and he was like, "Whoa, bro, hold on." We went to Hooters, right? Uh-huh. And he goes, "Hey, how much are you gonna tip?" And I was like, oh, "Probably like twenty percent," which is like four dollars. Mm-hmm. He gets all mad. He goes, "Why not five? And I was like, "Cause I don't have five dollars." 
Bro, it's a different type of scumbag. Not you. You're cool. No, he got, he's no, not judging no, he, me about he's, that. He's, he's right. not judging you. No, he's right. It's a dollar less. I you judged know, him. You guys gave him all. You gave all no, gave five. I gave her What four. I meant was, hold on. No, we've no, no, the story. I'm, wait, I'm not Rashad now. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to let you, you finish. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to let you finish. You just Kanye me. I'm going to let you finish. But it's because your bill came out to be fifteen dollars, <laughs> and you tipped four dollars. That makes it nineteen dollars. Why wouldn't you just tip five and make it an even twenty? <laughs> it became an even nineteen. The stuff that bothers no. These guys. It, it, I'm sorry that you hate odd uh, numbers, but it's, chill. It's it like, really does. You know what? Next time we go to eat, I'm not gonna tip it all. It's the principle just to show you how much of a scumbag I can oh be. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Yeah, I That's, think you're just doing that for you now. You're yeah, yeah, for yeah, now you're doing yeah. it for you. This is what you after this? <laughs> but, <laughs> by the way, shout out to Maria. But uh, yeah, shout out to Maria. She was so that's what I mean. She it's was, just, and then he was nice like, oh, I can't be here because the girls are, she, you know. They were scantily like, clad. He was sexualizing kind of them. I said, bro, yeah. the only person sexualizing as a woman is you. Yeah. All I see is a woman. Oh, she had a tattoo, and I, I asked her, because like, I love dragons. I don't know. It's my sis, my style in Kung Fu, a dragon, I mean, which represents like a. Uh, uh, Guardian of, of the gods or wisdom or it represents strength. You know, it represents a lot to me. It represents yeah. a lot of things Guardians that I am. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> but it also represents that, you know, uh, I am calm, but I will rip you apart. You know. So, yeah, and then he was just sexualizing her so bad that he had to, he couldn't even stand to see her. But this dude just goes to church, and I'm like, bro, so this is where you're supposed to practice everything you've been preaching and talking about, right? Yeah. So that's why I said to me, a lot of these people are just like, not about that life. You're not really not here. You're just here to, to look good, sound good. Like, sound yeah. tell, you know. Do, do, you think, do you think Jesus was scared to go into the brothel? No. No. That's where he would. That's where he would have his meetings. He was all around. <laughs> uh, all With over the, the goons, place. man. I'm telling you, <laughs> he was all over the place. Right. Yeah. But that's what I mean, though. It's but just that, but what what do you what do you think of that? I mean, do you think, you know, uh, that that you know the friend that we're that we're um, that we're speaking of or friends? Because I have more than yeah. That, just well, that yeah, multiple multiple Most friends people. that are that are like that. We're like you know, well, I can't be in this place because it's. It's too much of a temptation and all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't dance, I don't party, and that, and but I, I got told that the other day because I said I, I posted something. Uh, oh, posting good uh, scriptures doesn't make you a better Christian. She's like, well, I don't dance and I don't drink and I don't party. Still doesn't mean you're sorry going, that you're boring. That doesn't that necessarily mean you're going. Yeah. To what do you, What do you think? What do you think of that? So, what's the difference between going to Hooters and going to the beach? Right. Oh. Uh, Okay, or to a swimming pool, right? For a matter of fact, so you're saying you're not going to go to a swimming pool, you know? Look at the women at Walmart these days; they (laughs) dress worse than the girls at Hooters sometimes. Speaking by, I'm going to Walmart after this (laughs) at two (laughs) o'clock, two o'clock in the in the morning. Yeah, no, you're right. Mm -hmm. So honestly, it's just up to the person in their mind. Obviously, Mm -hmm. he just couldn't handle that situation because honestly, me and my wife love going to Hooters to eat Mm -hmm. the wings and the (gasps) and the uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the buffalo (laughs) shrimp. Right. I have not found any other place that can make buffalo shrimp like theirs. Facts. Yeah, because it's batter, da- batter dipped yeah. with yes. uh, kinkos yeah. on it. And I yeah. even tried to make it at home. It didn't come out as good as theirs. Oh, wow. So, so they got You're stealing recipes from Hooters. Let me find out you He needs inspiration. He's all like, Let me find out you've eaten Hooters food to the homeless. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> I've made great meals for them out there. So uh, hey, they know it. Yeah. But that's yeah. what's up, though. Yeah. Right. You that's see what up. I mean, though. I mean, it's like you don't you can go in there. I think I saw this video uh, where the girl. Uh, I think they call her uh, Bikini Karen. I think where this girl's in a bikini, and the one of the Karens come up to her and tell her she needs to cover up because her sons are getting boners or something mm-hmm. like that. But I'm like, you should wait, teach your wait, sons. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, you, you, you can't just gloss. You, you can't somebody. just well, because the sons can just gloss like, over that. The sons are looking at her now, like, oh, that maybe my husband. I'm like, well, that sounds like a you problem. Yeah. Teach your 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 kid, your sons, to be more respectful men and don't mm-hmm. sexualize and objectify yeah. a woman. Yes, mm-hmm. that's that's a bad that falls right a there. responsibility. Exactly. I'm sorry. That falls the responsibility on the parent, not mm-hmm. on everyone else. Not uh, it's not my job to tell you, you know, be like, hey, you need to cover up because you're getting these guys turned on well these guys should know enough be better men first of all we should be mm-hmm. be able to look at a woman and be like eh whatever because mm-hmm. hey, my kids like, are still at that age that when they see women on tv like oh daddy no and they'll be in swimsuits and yeah. cover their faces mm-hmm. but that's their innocence i didn't teach i have not taught them to look at women 
in an objectifying way. How old are your kids? Mm-hmm. Um, I got seven, 13, 14, and 15. The 15 oh, okay. year old is like, ah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, all of them are like that. They're really? like, that. yeah. Yeah, they're just yeah. not. It's that innocence. Good for them. But, good for them. Yeah, but they, it's the innocence part of it. Yeah. They're all but, 15, I'm like, ooh. But also, <laughs> but also something that, something that <laughs> I think is important that you said. Is they they do that for themselves. They make that decision for themselves. Mm, so yes. they are already, the, like you've already taught them. Like, hey, if there's something in your environment that you don't like, you can do something about, about it. it. Yes, about how you react. It's like, hey, you know. So again, you know, I I kind of understand right. how you know some people are like. Well, I don't want to be in that environment because okay, maybe that's not for you. Right. But at the same time. Let's look at why that's not for you. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it is it not for you because, oh, you're a Christian? Or is it not for you because you don't have enough self-control? You, that You hit it right there. Mm. They don't have enough self-control of themselves to be able to stop it. You know what I mean? Yes. Because it's not like it's not like Jesus said that you can't have wine. Jesus said that everything should be in moderation. Right. Yes. Jesus said, didn't say that you can't, you know, do all of these things, but hey, you know, if you were disres- if you were disrespecting your own self, mm. then then it's not a good thing for and you. See, that's one thing I see a lot of people that everybody quotes the Bible, but it's to their benefits. Mm. Oh yes, you know how yeah. people people are like, well, gave you know cherry gave, picking, right? Yeah. I know you. Dude, I, <laughs> hey, before I went to Bible college, oh yes, yeah. me and my wife had the biggest fight all the time, and we'd be. Wives, submit yourself. Woman, don't you read the scripture? <laughs> yeah. It says submit. It says submit. And, then, and then when I got to Bible college, it goes, but husbands, submit yourselves to the way to the Lord, mm-hmm. the way your wife should submit to you. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I'm yeah, a worse I'm sinner. So, right. Honey, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. What's funny is not many men notice that. Like, no, they skip they, that verse. They skip that part. Yeah, they right. skip that verse. Well, men are supposed to be as, as like triple loyal. To their wives, as the wife should be to the husband. Yeah, yep. love your wife like you love the church, and how many sinners are in that church? Mm. Exactly, Ooh. that's what it says. Facts. Yes. That ass. But, Facts. And that's Ooh. the thing that, um, like, I have, you know, I have family members that are so deep into, you know, in that, in the church, that, you know, they said that, because I have my nose pierced and my ears pierced, but I had that since I was a teenager, since I was a kid. I'm going to hell. And I'm just like, you know, I said this, like, I think Tupac said, God doesn't need this big church with these golden statues, with these big windows, with these big oversized churches to be for me to talk to him. God, all I need to do, I can go outside and talk to God, and I have. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've been by myself, and I've spoken out loud or prayed, you know, pray for all my friends. Pray for, I don't need a church to go to. And they'll be like, oh, well, the, the, the guy is a millionaire and buying jets and cars, but yet the, one of his followers is... Giving, giving her last money. That's all she has. Like when Joe Olstein closed the doors of the church when the whole city was flooding. There you go. See, I had I had a... I mean, I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. But I'm saying. I had a friend of mine. She said, you know, uh, again, I'm not I'm not judging. She said, well, Manny, you should give up all your money for... Uh, what did they call that? You get When you give up all your money to the church and they will return for you tenfold. Oh, tithing? Uh, I, I don't even know. Offerings, I think. And I said, yeah. you know what? The money that I got is going to go where it needs to be because I blessed my mom with money because she had no money to pay the bills. I gave all up on my money. My brother helped my mom. No, and that honestly, tenfold, scripture, scripture that tenfold says is a, not money. Well, it's you know, Yeah, but then again, I'm just like, well, again, look at the, the people. It depends who's running the churches. If I'm, I'm not going to give my money to Joe, Joe Osteen. I'm not going to give my money to all Because scripture doesn't yeah, necessarily it, it, say no, give it, it to the church. It says to take care of your family first. Yeah. And then yeah. The yeah, you, oh, see, there yeah. you go. But she so, was telling me to give my money up automatically. Uh, yeah. I said, Manny, no. Give up, like, I want to see your bank account, and I'm going to make sure no, that I'm at, all that I'm at, bro, goes Bro, I'm at 14 right now. I'm at $14. <laughs> well, 13 of that goes 14 to and a half, oh, bro. 14 and a half. <laughs> 14 and a half, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you see what I mean, though? It's just like, it's not wrong for putting my family first. No. Now, I'm saying, you know, people will be like, well, you should put God first. Well, God knows what's, you know, people will be like, well, God already knows what's in my heart. God yes. already knows that I'm going to do what I need to mm-hmm. do. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm going to take care of my family first. Mm-hmm. Everything else comes second. I'm yep. sorry, you know, yeah. because at the end of the day, I need to take care of my family because they will be, again, that is God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in them. Mm-hmm. It's in little pieces, but it's because it's not a, to their agenda or what they're trying to tell me what is it for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's when it doesn't fit their agenda. That's why, like, oh, you're going to hell. Oh, you're it doesn't, like, a, like, for for instance, like, I don't have a I don't have a home church. Right. So I'm I'm a Christian, but I don't necessarily have a home church. But 
I do give at the very minimum. I probably do more so because, you know, I don't really keep track. I give my 10 percent, but my 10 percent may be 20 bucks to a homeless dude that I see at the 7-Eleven. Mm. It might be seeing somebody who seeing somebody who needs gas at a gas station. And, hey, let me give you 20. You know, right. it yeah. might be, you know, it might be whatever it is. You know, it might be, hey, my my brother's my brother's family needs stuff. Right. I give it. You know what I mean? So it's not like that idea of of spreading your 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 blessings out, I think isn't isn't just tied to, hey, it has to be in this big mega church. Right. Right? Yeah, I agree. You that know church, what I mean? church has been there for a while. It's going to take care of itself. It's not going to go anywhere. There you go. You know, you know, so, I mean, I mean, you know. don't don't get me wrong. I mean, churches are cool. I mean, cool as in like, <laughs> <laughs> as, in, bad, man. as in like the idea of, hey, we're, we're all going to get together. We're together. all going yeah. to gather and stuff like that. Like the right. concept of church, I think, is, is a well, great idea. Yeah. It's just, you know, sometimes humans have a tendency to take a good idea and make it bad. bad yeah. yeah. No, no, I was just going to get to that because <laughs> oh, yeah. not so long ago, I, I was in a, at a church gathering and... Brand, the gossip there is real. Just like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mira, era, mm. viene María, se cree mucho la guay, era, nobody will lecture. I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought we were all like, in I fact, thought, I, really? I, I left my family church, like the church that my whole family went to, I left it because of that. And see, it's and like, I, mm. you know, it was just, I leave, because I left, my mom got married to a new guy, and so we went to his church. Right. And it, because it was like 30 minutes away, but that, my home church so we're mm-hmm. like we couldn't like, make the drive all the time right and i come back like three years later you know everybody's changed everybody's like not welcoming to me at all like you left how dare you leave where'd you go that i'm like, like a cult, to a different bro. church mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's a cult, bro. Uh, it is a cult. you ch- you cheated <laughs> no, on, you cheated on your church you went somewhere else you on your church. how I'm dare like, you and i was I like i think you guys are supposed to be welcoming like i'm coming back yeah i came back because like I love that church. I grew up there. My right. mm-hmm. my family was the big name there. Mm-hmm. And so I came back because I was like, oh, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. And I go back and everybody's just like, what are you doing here? Like, who are you? And like, act like they didn't even know me, even though they did. Because mm-hmm. my grandparents still went there. My uncles and aunts went there. But well, nope. Well, that's the thing that what are we doing? If we're going to be like that, why do we even go? If we're going to be gossiping and, and hating on each other, I thought a place that's supposed to uplift everybody and, and promote positivity. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're going through a hard time. Come over here. Let's, let's cheer you up. You know what I mean? Uh, you're going through depression. you got friends here. But instead, we're going to sit there and talk bad about each other? That's just like, that doesn't seem right with me. That's right. Like, yeah. why? You know what I and mean? Like, I heard one of my atheist friends, they came up to me and go, I don't get you, like, Christianity. You guys go to church on Sunday, praise the Lord, and you go back, go home and... You treat other people bad. Mm. Like, you know, I admit it. I, you know, I've been rude to people. I think everybody in the world has. You've been rude to uh, the cancel show. I have been 100%. rude to the cancel show. You said you were going to leave, <laughs> and then you didn't. I mean, is that really rude? I That's came really back rude. for you guys. It's so They're, rude. No, okay. You're not a man of your word. I'm going to fuck myself. I'm you didn't keep your word. I'm very offended. But, like, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Well, yeah, but there's also different types of Christians. Like, Are the, there? They're the real Christians that are devoted who are nice to everybody. I've met them. I don't think they're Christian. But I don't think just because you're nice doesn't make you a Christian. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. I'm talking no, about like... No, they're, no. they're Okay. I really don't. So what I'm saying is they actually are devoted to Christ. They right. do his will. He did. You know, they are God-fearing people. They follow all the rules. You know, the Ten Commandment rules. They are, you know, give offerings. They give to homeless. You know, I've met those type of people. Mm-hmm. And so... And then there's all those, the other people who go to church, you know, Christmas and Easter. And I'm like, all right. CME members. It. Christmas, yeah. Mother's Day, Easter. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I've met those people. And I'm like, yeah, those are two different types. You got the real ones and you get the lazy ones. Hey, I'm going to read this right quick. Heather Carson says, facts. Jose Cortina's watching. Mr. Lawrence Pete says, good topic, good conversation. That's right, fellows. And L- Loren Rain Tucker says, what's up? Oh, okay. Hey, how Lauren. you doing? Yeah, uh, uh, with my coworkers. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm gonna call you Riri. What's up, Riri? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, I mean, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. I think again, treat with each other with respect. 
Don't exp- uh, do stuff just for you with a kind heart. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Just do it for the kindness, just, right? Just do it for and the kindness. And don't expect nothing back. Right? But that's what the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the hardest things I had to learn. Yeah. And lend people money and then and then uh, try to expect it back. If you give somebody money, don't expect it back. Right. You know, expect it as a gift. There you go. That's like what we that's, do. It. That's yeah. a gift. Miss, yeah. If it comes yeah. back, great. If not, it not, has. And I'll work. tell you why, though. Miss Lawrence Peace said, what is the difference between religion and a relationship? A religion, Ooh, that's a good okay, question. yeah, that is a good, good question. Really a question. religion mm-hmm. could be anything. Uh, it could be uh, atheists could come up with a religion. A uh, Catholic religion, you got Christian religion mm-hmm. or uh, Baptist religion. That's those are considered religions. Uh, relationship would be you are just in a personal relationship with God, where you and Him intimately just talk with each other. Mm. Okay, you don't need a building for to have a relationship with him. Right. Right. You know, that's, but it does help for, like he said, there are certain good, good people in there to help you grow. There's right. some, right, right. but like you said, there are a lot of people that, that go in there and that need to be in there because they mm. keep on talking about all the other women and all the yeah. other guys in the church and stuff. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that answered that. Yeah. That says, uh, Riri said, I'm a Christian as well. And my fiance and we are very much believe in God. But it's so hard to find a church that's accepting of us, and it sucks that it's always such a touchy subject. Well, that's the thing, that it is a touchy subject. No matter where you go, people, and it, ugh, bro, I, I, me and my brother Rashad said this, if you cannot have a conversation, you're not the one. You know I mean, you're not the church for me. Why? Because, again, what did you just say? Jesus with the goons and everybody. So when you come to me, and then you ask me a question, I got to be ready. Even if I don't agree with your uh, ideas or whatever, I still got to respect it. Yes. You know, now pe- immature people to me is people that are getting mad. Or, oh, no, you're wrong, this and that. Well, why are you mad? Why are you mad, though? Why are you mad? <laughs> what you mad, though? Why are you mad, though? You mad, bro? You mad? If it's a touchy <laughs> subject, then don't be a pastor. If it's a touchy subject, then don't come to the church. If it's a touchy subject, stay out of my lane and be in yours. Because, you know, uh, you know, I guess based, based on our conversation, it seems like, you know, anybody can really come to you and be like, hey, hey, pastor, I, I, I kind of want to talk to you about this. You know what I mean? And... You will come at it with with a hey. You want to talk about it? Okay, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's discuss it. I'm not. I'm not gonna shove my views down your throat, and I'm not gonna be offended by all the stuff that you say. All right? Yeah. You know, it's just like okay, we're just gonna have this conversation, and I mean, at the end of the day, God's is the one that's gonna be judging us. Mm. I'm not gonna judge you. That's true. You know I might I mean? judge you a little bit. I'll be like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, Rashad, I judge you every day. I mean, <laughs> I don't judge in public. Uh, <laughs> you know, I might question what you're doing. I mean, oh, I might question. question what you're doing. I mean, but. I mean, mainly the mainly mainly the only time I judge is when you come with crazy eyeglass wear, wear which I'm so glad you didn't today. Uh, normally, he has some crazy stuff on. And and I judge him for that. And <laughs> am I wrong for that? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think I'm wrong for that. But if we if we come at every conversation like, hey, I'm not here to judge. We're just here to talk. You know, if we if we take out like if we take out the judgment in our conversations, I think a lot of times. I mean, especially especially you know with the hey i'm a christian kind of people you know not the oh oh he's a christian it's the i need to tell you i'm a christian so that way i have the moral high ground mm. when we have this conversation <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. I, I know i know you yeah. know those people i'm talking yeah. about yes you know yes. what i mean it's like it's like uh, and like like one of the big things i never throw out either that i'm a pastor mm-hmm. you see like your energy like will tell it it should to show off, man, there's something different about you. Do you teach somewhere? Or what? There you, you go. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I don't even like to throw that title out there because mm-hmm. it's just a title. There you and, go. You know, to be honest, like every Christian should be living like a pastor. There's no difference. Ooh, facts. And when I taught my youth group, uh, I had told them, I said, what's the difference? If you if you saw my car up down the street at the bar, what would y'all do? Oh, you can't do that, pastor. I said, so what makes it okay for y'all to do it? 
There's no mm-hmm. difference. We're both mm-hmm. going to the same Wait, church. Why can't you go to a bar? Mm-hmm. Huh? Why can't you go to a bar? Why why can I not? Exactly. exactly. Why, why can't the pastor go to the bar? Why, why, why could I not go have one drink? Mm-hmm. Moderation. I remember that rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, they, they take Scripture into so, mm-hmm. so strictly mm-hmm. some some churches, like, like you can't be a man of hard drink. Well, okay, you, you can't get drunk off of it. This is what mm-hmm. the Scripture says. Right. Yeah, exactly. Drunk off excess. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. And excess, yeah. Well, I think you, out of all people, deserve to drink, Pastor, because dealing with all the people's madness, of course you need to right? drink. Right? I mean, <laughs> if anybody deserves a drink, dealing with dealing with the flock, oh, <laughs> you know? Yes. I, I can see just the pastor be like, oh, Lord, Lord. Lord. Uh, uh, like, oh, no. Mm. Mr. Pete. Jesus, right. help me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pete, well, he said, that's right. God is the judge. Mind your own business. Exactly. Mind Mind your business. Mind mind your business. (laughs) Exactly. You know, at the, you know, of course, you know, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let my brothers and sisters fall. If I, if I, I wouldn't be a good friend if, if I see them doing bad and I'm like, Hey, maybe you might should, you might want to change something up. You know what I mean? Maybe this isn't working for you. You know, you know, if you come at it from from that standpoint, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to judge you for it. I mean, if you want to get if you want to get drunk every day, I'm going to tell you, hey, that's probably not good for you. But if that's what you want to do, I'm going to let God deal with you. Yeah, that's that's all you have to do. Leave it in his hand yeah. and be there whenever they're ready. to Exactly. Come to you. There you go. Pick them up when they fall. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all it is. Well, with that being said, don't let us fall right now. We're about to go on break and we will be back. Oh, did you uh, did you pick the songs? I think you picked the song. Don't go on break. Don't go on Manny, break. Manny picked the songs. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Ken. You want to go for a ride? Sure, Ken. Jump in. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. Life in plastic. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair. I'm dressed me everywhere. Imagination. Life is your creation. Let's go party. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. 
<laughs> well now, we call this the act of mating, but there are several other very important differences between human beings and animals that you should know about. to the canceled show i'm your host rashad dyson and i am the one and only manny here with junior aka pastor j aka marine what did they call you in the marines what were you marines no no what what was your nickname in there his name is private oh thug life Ah, oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no. You need these, my guy. Yeah. You need these. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, with oh, the that thug one. life. There you go. Pastor Thug Life. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Thug, thug life, life in the house. Yeah, you said my glasses were a stupid idea. 
Shout out to Jenny. Thank mm-hmm. you, Jenny. All right. Um, with that being said, you said you were an educator, correct? Yes, I was. How long have you been doing that? I, 2016 was my first year <laughs> teaching, and I resigned during uh, COVID, mm. around COVID, because I was, I was looking at being terminated dur- during COVID break. Why is that? Um, I had reported some students that were being raped at the school. Uh, by mm. the same student that was posting videos of another girl that was in my classroom. Yeah. Whoa. And uh, there was another student that ha- happened to get on the computer in my classroom, and she was downloading um, 15-year-old girls naked all over her. Uh, really? Yeah, all over her thing. And so, Why were you about to get terminated? Oh, because I turned them in. Why? Uh Obviously, were they, were they the, the assistant kids? principal, Mr. Shepard, which I am not afraid to name names, Mr. Shepard, mm-hmm. he works at O.D. White currently, uh-huh. has a background for domestic violence, and he decided to delete the videos. Really? Yes, instead of punishing the kid. So I went ahead, and uh, the girl was scared to make the report, so I couldn't mm-hmm. do anything without the girl you right. know, right. doing it. You can't make a CPS report. But you have to. So right. I had to wait for her confirmation to do it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the guys were teasing her in the classroom that I finally was able to file a CPS report. And it was like three days later because they were giving her a hard time uh, about the video. Um, and then... Uh, now, was she, was she in the video? Yes. That's oh, yeah, isn't that the guy, no. yeah. Wait, what grade, what, like, what grade was this? Like, what grade are they on? Uh... 12th grade, oh and uh, one girl was in 12th grade, and the other girl was 15 years old. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, because my other still, these are minors. These are yes. minor. Yeah. Yes. And that's what the Texas Ranger said when that found out about it. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah. yeah, he said this was child pornography. And that's minors. exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's child pornography. And then, uh, and me, myself, I thought it was like, what, what did we say it was, Manny? Um, Human trafficking. Uh, human trafficking, a form of human trafficking. Mm-hmm. You would think it would be because of the child porn and how it's lifted up on the sites and stuff. Yeah. And so, anyway, so what brought it to, to fruition was I ended up making a report. The girl made a report. The principal should have made a, a uh, CPS report, never did. Yeah. It was should've. his job to do it because I sent right. the child to, her, to him to do it, Mr. Shepard. Right, Shepherd. right. And then um, he never did his job. And so then I called a friend that work, used to work with me, and he said, dude, did, is, did the police get involved, the school officers on campus? Yeah, I was about to say, what about the, uh, what is it, the courtesy officer yes. that they have? So yeah, I sent the little girl to go find out the police report number so that we could start, turn it into CPS. Right. The officer said, Mr. Shepard already told you you took care of it. Go back to class, girl. Wow. And sent her back to class. Not only is the girl, uh, she's also sped, so she's special ed. Mm-hmm. So there's issues with her, you know. Comprehension yeah, and stuff comprehension like that. Yeah, comprehension in some part. Not only that, one parent's dead and the other one's in prison. So the so her guardian was her 20-year-old 20, 20 uh, sister. Wow. So they took advantage of this girl so bad, this one girl. Uh, but prior to that, he had raped another little girl before this had even happened. And he's still in the school. Yeah. In the fact, princi- wait, the principal? In fact, all these cases no, there, happened. It was a student, right? Student. student. Oh, my goodness. The student, in the, he's still in the school. They expelled him for two two months. Right. That's and it? And then, then they let him come back the oh, next yeah. year to help enroll kids after he had already graduated. Wow. Yes. Wait, so, wait, so f- he'd already graduated. Yes. And then they let him come back after he graduated to help enroll kids. Yes. Wow. Yes. That just that, grosses me out. Right? That's, that's yes. wow. Anyway, so they ended up suspending me while they investigated it. And so Why? while I was on what? suspension because the one of the students said it was mine, even though I had two or three other students in my office that saw that it was that little girl's account that was there. And mm. uh, the police officers ended up, Pulling those two girls in there after they had already written a statement stating what they saw, that right. it was the little girl stuff and all that. Uh, right. I mean, they testified to a T that we saw it was her account. It was we her saw account, that, yeah. That it was on her name. We saw this. Then the officers, after I reported it to Police Chief Fitzgerald, who was here in Fort Worth still at the time, mm-hmm. they ended up... Uh, 
they still they tore up their initial police reports and made them rewrite one and said, are you sure it wasn't chefs? Are you sure it ain't chefs? And kept on, the, so the little girls came back to my class and said, chef, they were trying to get us to change the report and put your name Coercion. Mm. Yes. Wow. Then after I called police chief Fitzgerald so wait, the I'm second time. So quick question real quick. Were these kids that like were being, you know, accused of all this, the guys, you know, did this, were they like the popular kids? Uh, one one was a starting football player. The other one, the other one, no, she she wasn't. They were just trying to. That's probably the reason why, because the starting they, they, they protected they won, him. They protect, yeah, they protected him. They yeah. protect the people, like popular kids. Yeah. Because I had the same incident in high school where I was going against people, and they took their sides because they were oh they're top musicians here, you know they're football players here. And I was like, but that defeats the point. They're doing something illegal here. Yes. 100% and so, nope, they protect so, them. So this so the 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 guy that was taking this video of of this girl and you said this this girl was was special needs? Yes, she was she was special needs. And and she wasn't the only one no, that he'd been taking prior videos. Prior to that, the, right. like a month or two prior to that, he raped another girl. Wow. He raped a girl. And they still let him go back to school. Yes. Yes. Wow. And so me and that parent went to our uh, state representative mm -hmm. and in uh, Bill Zedler, mm -hmm. and he got in, got to get some investigations going. Mm -hmm. um, Susan Wright, who's it? Who her husband just passed away, Senator Ron Wright. Mm -hmm. She ran for she, Congress. She was working for Bill Zedler, and she did the intake and talked to the father, talked to me, mm -hmm. and went ahead and got her husband involved, Ron Wright. Mm -hmm. Ron Wright ended up calling the Texas Rangers. And and uh, somebody else, and they contacted me and said we're looking into it, but nothing ever was ever done. It got dropped. I called the FBI. FBI didn't do nothing about it. Wow. Um, and so when I called back to call the Texas Rangers myself, they said, "Sir, we already know about it." The reason why they knew about it because uh, Senator Ron Wright had already called. Mm. But everybody on the Congress level and Bill Zedler, they tried to do their part, mm. but. Everybody that was supposed to investigate it, internal affairs, just turned me away and said, no, you got to go talk to someone else. Talk to their chief officer, and their chief officer wouldn't come and talk to me. Wow. Yes. So they, you got basically, they they gave you the runaround, and then when they couldn't give you the runaround, run around, they stonewalled you. Yes, because I went to the board. Um, in February, I was about to say, did you go to the school board? Yes, and they shut me up and pulled me off to the side. In fact, after that, T. T. Sims, the the board member over that school who knew about it, that was mm -hmm. supposed to be helping me, he was just trying to cover it up. He really wasn't trying to help me. He was just saying, wow. "Hey, don't say nothing, Junior. Don't do nothing yet. Let it work its way through." But the reason being is because if I brought it out to the open, mm -hmm. then it would have made him look bad, and he right. knew about it. Right. And the whole time, so let, he didn't do nothing as a board member, and he resigned that last year. Wow. So he knew about it principal knew about it and they all just tried to cover it up yeah and even scribner knows about it I, there's a pamphlet left and right with all everything that happened day to day with the case numbers and everything and i gave it to every one of the school board members and toby keith the current fort worth school head school board member right now uh-huh she she knows about it and still won't do anything about it wow it, it got all the way up to scribner uh, uh, Dr. Scribner knows about it mm -hmm. because it went through emails because it had to go all the way up right. to him. Right. But Scribner ended up hiring a new principal to come after me mm -hmm. to try to make me look bad, and they tried to terminate me that last year I was there. But they couldn't because I was the only CTE, which means career technical education teacher, mm -hmm. that had a student pass the certification. So not a single student passed a nursing certification, not computer certification, any certifications that mm -hmm. a student needs to, to, to be certified in that field that we right. have in high schools now, uh -huh. I'm the only teacher that did. Wow. And they still tried to terminate me, but they couldn't because they were like, you're the only one that brought us from a from an F to a D because of your two certifications. Wow, that's crazy. I think you, you But they tried the the fact that they tried though, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. During COVID. I went during to COVID. <laughs> wow. It was during COVID. You wow. mentioned to me that you moved to Hillsboro, correct? And yes, because, and, and this is why. Um, the police officers that I turned in, the resource officers that didn't do police reports, I ended up um, 
calling police chief Fitzgerald, like I told y'all. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know it, they show up into my classroom during my off period. Now, how does the officer know when a teacher's off periods are? Mm. Weird. Oh, weird. Assist, okay. Yeah, assistant right. principal told them uh, when my off period was. So they came into my office as soon as my kids were walking out of my classroom, mm -hmm. put their hands on their guns, and started threatening me. Why did you go call on us? Why did you do this? And we're recording this. I said, I'm glad you are because I'm going to ask for that video afterwards. Yeah. Mm. And um, Eddie Brown did an article on this mm -hmm. on uh, the Fort Worth Weekly, mm -hmm. and he even questioned and asked for that video and Fort Worth Police Department refused to give it to him. What the fuck are they gonna do in the class, like in that classroom, with their hand on their gun, shoot you? Everybody's gonna fucking hear it. Yeah, they would just incriminate themselves. They were not that smart doing this, were they? But nah, it's an it intimidation didn't. factor. Yeah. But it didn't Wait, scare you me. You shouldn't be intimidated. Like, He's a marine, though. He's not intimidated. exactly. You shouldn't be because one, if they were to kill you in that school, they would be caught immediately because mm -hmm. one, you had no weapon on you, so they shot you for no fucking reason. Yeah. And they're the only ones in there that have guns. So well, like they would incriminate themselves. Well, to be to be fair, you might not you might not know this, uh, but um, cops can kill people of color and get away with it, even if it is on video. They've done it before in the United States. Yeah, I know. I it's mean, terrible. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that that's a good thing, but I'm just saying that They'll justify it in some way. Somehow. That's that's probably what the officers were thinking. He reached for my gun. No, he didn't. He was like, he, you know, he he reached for my gun. Yeah. Oh, he has something on him, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they've literally killed people on co people of color on video See? and gotten away with it. And because they have officers like that. As opposed to the officers that we were talking about last week. I was about to say, if you were here last mm -hmm. week, you would have known. Yeah. The, as, as opposed to the officers last week would have known that, hey, this intimidation factor is is not really it's not really a thing. So let me ask you this. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Pastor Junior, Jay. Junior, just Junior. Chef Boy D. <laughs> Chef Boy, you can Chef get these hands. Uh, <laughs> Chef Boy, life. F the laws. I don't know, right. but... Why? Why did you feel like it's your need to step up and say something? Why? Why you? If there's so many other people, like why weren't you one of the ones that stepped down? And yeah, let them handle this. Because it wasn't the right thing to do. Mm. You know, it's. Uh, I looked at my students like my sons and daughters. Mm. You know, I wouldn't want anything to happen to them. When the parents leave them at that front door and they're in my classroom, I'm responsible for them. Yeah. You know. And if that per parent comes to me and says, hey, why didn't you do something? You know, I, I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Right. You know? Yeah. At least I did everything I could for that student, you know. And, <clears throat> and they can say, hey, that teacher was there for my kid whenever right. they needed me. And if that, that, that student that I helped during that time, she can always go back and remember, hey, somebody stood up for me. Even when my parents were yes. not there, yes, my, my my one of my parents on drugs and one was on parent on in prison, but yet my teacher was there. Well, you you're, you're the guy for the job. I've always said, me and my brother always talk. Me and Rashad always talk about like, you you gotta step up, bro. No one else can. You were given that gift. God called on you to do it. Not someone else would be doing it. Yeah, but I'm gonna be blackballed now because I turned I turned them in. So the districts, the, the superintendents, they talk with each other. Right. So Hinojosa talks with, with Scribner. Y'all see them on the news all together all the right. time. So these, they inter talk with each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So here I put in an application with Arlington ISD, but they probably are not going to hire me because they're going to look, oh, that's that teacher that reported on them. When they should be like, oh, we ought to hire that teacher yeah. because right? he was the one that reported what, on them. What like is it? You know, yeah, like if if I were like the the principal or or, or the hiring manager stuff like that, I would a hundred percent want someone okay. like you, because because if I'm in charge of the school, I want someone who's going to point out something that's wrong, right, and let me know, way more than someone who's going to cover some shit up. Yes, yes. I mean because. Don't we want a good functioning school in a good, safe environment? That's yes. what we right. want. So ask me, ask me, why are they not? So they, why? Why, yeah. why are they covering it <laughs> up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reason why they're covering it up, and this two days ago, a teacher was fired for Fort Worth Independent School District because she hit a student. 
you haven't seen it on the news. No. Yet, nothing no, on there. No. <laughs> yes. Just Which, two days, a uh, preschool student at Hardinville Elementary uh, hit hit one of the preschoolers, a three-year-old, mm-hmm. on the oh. hand and stuff like that. And she went and turned herself in. And they, they waited three days before they terminated her. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, why is this these these things that are actually wrong not being turned in? Well, because then the parents have a right to pull them out of that district because of what's going on at those schools. Right. right. And the schools leave lose money for the students that are not in the school that can go somewhere God else. God damn it. Always comes back so to money. So it comes back to the money. money. Yeah. Yes. God damn it. Every yes. time it comes back to the money. Yes. I swear, bro. Like, still doing the right thing and being helping. Out. And that's the thing that it sucks for you that you're doing the right thing. Actually, we like what Rashad said. We need more people like this stand up mm-hmm. and do something. But no, now you're blackballed. And well, is there any any new leads or any new hopes or any new uh, information that that you can tell us or that 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 has been done? No, nothing. Nothing new has been done. There hasn't been. In fact. The friend that helped me report it still can't talk to me about it. There's another teacher in the district that has raped a student, and and I wow. got a secret source that said it's 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 live, mm-hmm. but they don't want anybody to know about it. So a teacher that has had sex with a student yeah, in the district, wow. and so they're just covering up. Nothing's being done. Mm-hmm. Nobody's. It's just been rushed under this brush underneath the rug. So this. Yeah. So this is this is. Happening currently in currently. Fort Worth, and Texas, and by the way, and you your friend can't even talk about it because they're, they're covering up because they'll because they'll fire them. Yeah, they'll fire him just for being my friend. Wow. Yes. And see, my my thing is is that I would rather I would rather it's kind of like a there's an old Chinese uh, uh, old Chinese saying that says says no disease short death many diseases long life which means if you never find out what's wrong with you Mm. you'll die but if you go to the doctor and you find out what's wrong with you and get treated and you and you you cure the disease you have a long life well it's the same thing with systems like it's better if we find out all the things that's wrong with our mm. with our schools, with our systems. If there is a teacher that is taking advantage of kids, you know, raping kids and stuff like that, we want to know about that because yes. then we can treat it. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. If there are students that are abusing other students, like you know, you were able to find out and you were able to to help the student to stand up for the student to to go along you know with reporting it and sending it up to the highest levels because you were able to do that now we can say okay well why did this happen let's make sure it doesn't happen again exactly but if we cover it up and we never know then it just keeps happening right. over and yes. over and over and over again and i know some people out there are going to ask well why didn't he go to an attorney um I did go to an attorney. Mm-hmm. I, in fact, uh, Daryl Washington, the one that took up Amber Geiger's case, case or that was going against Amber Geiger. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Daryl Washington, but he didn't get back to me in enough time that time had lapsed. Mm. And then by the time he reviewed the case, finally, after dealing with that one, right. he um, called me back and he was like, man, time's run out. I'm sorry. You know, just, what does it mean, time's run out? You got a year to file. A, a lawsuit against him. See, that, really? Oh, yeah. That sounds a little suspicious. Yeah. To me. Wow. After a termination, I yeah. think termination, or maybe even less than that. I think because it was it, it's wrong for termination, right? Uh, it was forceful. Like even though I quit, it was to that point that it was like could have been forceful termination because yeah. they were seeking termination, and I got the emails mm-hmm. where they were like, "Hey, we're gonna put you on a contract of termination." Why? Mm-hmm. So you can fire me? But I got yeah. the Zoom meeting that you, mm-hmm. you know, said you were going to fire me anyways. Yeah, exactly. Like, y'all slipped up too many times, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've I've kept the paper trail, but it's just got the receipts. They said, yeah. There's just nothing they can do. I've tried to reach out to so many attorneys. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy yeah. that the the one thing they're supposed to do is what they're. <laughs> It's like they're, that's what they're, you know, their, their job. Exactly. They can't yeah. even do that. Protect the innocent, child, you know, little girl that that goes through this, and we and nothing can be done. No. Nothing. Just that's. 
I mean, okay. They, CPS should have done something about it, but they dropped the ball. CPS has. Because yeah. even though the sister's 21 years old and she has guardianship, that girl is too young to know what to do with a 18 year old girl she's right. a child herself still yeah she's a you child know? herself and yeah. plus her sister's got special needs and stuff like that i mean mm-hmm. i mean you don't want to necessarily split the family but yeah they still need more supervision yes let, let me ask you this when you found out about that who the guy is did you did you share the picture like what, what is that called is that shaming is that or is that even allowed like hey people watch out for this guy no don't. i can't because yeah, cause, yeah cause legally, because I'll be sued because of yeah. teacher confidentiality stuff. How about what if we did it? Can I, do I mean, <laughs> we're a third party, yeah. so <laughs> you know. Maybe like, hey guys, this guy's a pervert. What's up? Yeah. Because I mean, again, sometimes people need to know. Maybe you can't do it, but people need to know. Yeah. I don't want this guy around my my kid, my my little sister, my little brother. Because I mean, I'm telling you, you touch one of mine. You, Fuck the law. That's it. Yeah. Right, I'm to, old school. To to those that are those that are watching who who have children, I mean, you guys have, have heard have heard Junior. Isn't this the kind of teacher that we actually want in our schools? Yes. Isn't him going as far as he's he's gone as far as 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 Congress, as the the Rangers, as the FBI in order to get justice for this girl. Isn't that the kind of teacher that we want? That's what we need. Not just, that's exactly I mean, what we uh, need. Am, Please am I wrong? Say, especially now. I mean, let us know. Teachers don't let us know. Care. Right. Uh, Rudy said, makes me want to homeschool. It would be, but it's just putting a band-aid on a situation that needs to be addressed. Exactly. And we can easily do that. Yes, and you're right. But we're letting people get away with the crimes that are commi- that are being committed that are scarring people. Yeah. They're scarring people. That little girl life. is scarred. Yeah. Uh, that same principal was telling other students to go to her house and beat her up. That's why she stopped testifying. Wow. Uh, okay. See what I mean? Principal. Wait. Wait. Hold up. Hold up. Whoa, whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Say that again for the say, audience. Say the, Corey Shepard, the assistant principal, was telling students to threaten her to beat her up at her house and that is why she finally stopped and said, I cannot do this anymore. Because they were threatening to come to her house. The same girl this. that special needs. Yes. The same girl whose whose mother is addicted to, to drugs, whose whose father is in prison, whose sister, twenty one year old sister, is taking guardianship. You're you're saying that the principal of her school is asking students to go cause violence on her. Yes. The principal. She came to my office crying and said, I cannot do anything more, Chef. I'm done. She goes, they are threatening to come to my house to beat the shit out of me. Literally, that's what she said, crying. And see, this is what and I said, I am so up. sorry, sweetie. There's not, nothing else I can do unless you continue to speak up. And mm-hmm. she goes, I can't because they're threatening me now to come to my home. And, and that's the thing. That's the thing is that she went. She used. She has used all of her resources. She reached out to you. Her her immediate help. You did everything you could. You and her went to the principal, which should have been more help. Yeah. That should have been more help. Right. Yes. But that's where. That's where. The cover-up starts? And see, yes. Like, come and, on. And he's still the assistant principal, even though the district and he's knows. he's still there? The district knows exactly oh what he did. He's still at the school, and all they did was give him a couple of days of training classes and put him right back in the school. Oh, hell no. Okay. Okay, let's let's slow this down. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a put it all together for everybody. Just so you know, Junior's no longer working at that school. Right. Junior was the only one that was advocating for this girl. Only. The only one that was advocating for the girl. The first step in the cover-up was the principal. Junior's not there, but the principal is. So who do the students have to help? Mm. Who do they have? The other teachers are... They might be good people, 
But at the end of the day, they still have families. Yes, they're good fired if they speak up. They yes. still have, and they're seeing by example. Hey, if I advocate for, if I advocate to, I mean, because look at the lesson. Right. The lesson, the lesson is that if I speak up, I'm gonna end up like Junior. But if I cover it up, I'm gonna end up like the principal. Listen to this crap. The head coach, mm -hmm. after they got me off suspension, I was putting a barbecue competition. So if you see that, uh, most of my posts from Od White was from us winning barbecue competitions. Oh yeah, yeah, you were telling me. Yeah, about that. so yeah. I was putting a barbecue competition here in Fort Worth, and the head coach of the football team was supposed to help me. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as I got off suspension, the first thing I did was call him because the barbecue competition I was setting up was in February, and they just released me in the beginning of February. So right. I was like, "Hey, coach, you still going to help me?" He didn't know that my, my phone was connected to my car. You know, I have Bluetooth on your car. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And I was like, hey, coach, you're going to help me? And and my wife was sitting there, and my wife heard the whole conversation so she can verify this conversation happened. He goes, why the fuck did you report anything like that? Because you see what you're going through? I see that shit every day on the bus and in the, in the locker room, and I just turned the other way. Mm. The coach. Damn. The head coach. You see that? Like, and then he hung up on me. Wow. Well, that coach is a dumbass if he's hearing me. Now, if if uh. you're if you advocating, you're uh, advocating for for the students that come to you for help. If that was rewarded, then the coach would be more likely to help you out. I thought he would because he's a preacher too. Oh! oh. <laughs> Damn! Oh. oh! Oh! Bro, that hurt me, bro. One, one for Satan. Oh! <laughs> mm. I, I, I'm not keeping score here, but oh, uh, it's not it's not looking good for the home team. No, nah, bro. I mean, some this one preacher can make all of us look right. bad, right? Oh, good gravy! <laughs> oh, it's not looking goodness. good for the home team. Yeah. You can never tell me another chef. I mean, you can like, <laughs> Why'd you tell the other guy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's this is crazy. That's not the and see, and see and that's not the right way because first of all, it, it and then it doesn't go just there though because there's a lot of people that a lot of cases where um, people are molested. And like the the adults would be like, well, you gotta turn the other way. I'm used, you know, that's part of life. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's really not. Like no one should ever go through that ever. No. And as an adult, we have a responsibility, including all of us mm -hmm. here. If I were to see a little girl getting beat up or something, I, I'm a man and hand on the Bible. He's been my witness. I have stepped in fights. Yeah. Has nothing to do with me. Yes. But if I see someone getting their ass whooped. I'm gonna step in. We got a phone call. No, I, I we have a comment here. It's a question. Oh, what's up? Uh, one Ooh. person asked, "Do the parents have some blame on this?" Yes, I the, agree. So. Not with the little girl because, no. like, oh, one parent's no. in prison, and well, I'm, mm. I'm sorry. I think I had misstated that the parent, the mother, the person that passed away was on drugs, but oh. one of the parents oh, just right. passed, passed away. away. Yeah, That's one's, right. I'm sorry. One's dead, I and the other one's yeah. in prison. So, I the, she really has no parents, and then mm -hmm. I was helping the sister as much as I could. Mm -hmm. But what a coinkening was that um, her her sister husband totaled my car when it happened. <laughs> and so all of a sudden the sister didn't want to talk to me. Oh. She went into my car so she thought I'd be like mad thought at you'd her be mad stuff, and stuff like that. I didn't, it, I didn't her, her husband was an idiot, couldn't drive, and he just told him my car. The insurance paid for it. So, oh, well. And I told her, that's it's, oh, yeah. I don't care about it's that. It's just things. I care about yeah. you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but... You know, that's... Gee, and the, the person says that I'm talking about in general. Like, do parents have, like, are they... Should they have some blame on them? Like, would, why the fuck are their kids raping kids? Like, like it's been why? in the newspaper, so I kind of feel like, yes, all the parents from Odie White that are go taking their kids there, they... I posted it on Odie White. I posted it mm -hmm. everywhere. I did a video that had... 10, 000, more than 10,000, almost 20,000 hits. Right. Wow. So I don't see where any parent that took their their student there at their school does not know about it by now. You know, and they should question it. They should yes. bring it up. They should go to the school board. Yes. yes. And they should say, this is happening at my school. I mm -hmm. want a proper investigation done at my mm -hmm. school. There's many alumni right. that know that I did this uh, that still should be speaking up. 
Mm-hmm. But there like y'all said, you know, it's kind of like, oh, no, it's supposed to happen. It's underneath the yeah. rug. No, 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 no this no, is no, no. not. That's that sickness. That's that old style. And it was a sickness. You're it's right. A, and it's, it shouldn't it's a be sickness. that way. And the, and the thing is, I would say I would say the onus on the parents is is to is to, one if you need to monitor your children mm-hmm. as best as you can, whether they are perpetrators or whether they are uh, victims. Right. You need to monitor your children. You need to be involved. With that being said, if there is a problem in your school and you need to make sure that your school system, your school, your school system is handling it properly. If I were a parent whose child went to ODY, I would be pissed that Junior's gone. I'd be 100 percent pissed. Oh, I would be up there because because if my child can't come to me, I want teachers like Junior to be rewarded for advocating for my child. I'd be pissed that you were gone and that principal's there. No. I don't want a principal at my child's school who will sweep who will sweep problems underneath the rug. I want a principal at my school who rewards their teachers for coming to them right. with problems. I want a principal at my school who says, hey, parents, just to let you know, this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to handle this as best we can. Right. We will keep you updated with everything we can. I trust that more than, oh, there's nothing going on here. Mm. Nah. No, nah, I don't trust that. But that's the thing that, and, and it goes that you said 10,000 people. 10,000 people know. So 10,000 mother lovers have no excuse why not to call in, hey, what can we do to help you? Hey, Junior, where do we need to go? Hey, Junior, what do we need, to, uh, who do we need to call to make this happen again? Everybody mm-hmm. knows. Again, everybody, well, that's not my problem. Again, we say that till it happens to your kid. Exactly. You're gonna want a guy like this to stand up for you and exactly. go all the way, because you know what I mean. Nobody's doing that. No one's. You tell me you know, again. And this is not the only school I know. I went to Polytechnic. If everybody from East Side, we all East know. Side? We all know what happened. You know what I mean. Uh, we all know that teachers are hooking up with students, <laughs> and, and we all know it. Again, it happened at Northside too. It happened, oh, Northside. Yeah, at Northside. It happened there too, where one of the teachers got actually got married to the um, student. That's what? crazy. Yes. yes, yes. And then, matter of fact, the year before I started, the um, the English teacher at Old White got married to her student. They terminated her because they found out they were in a relationship. Wow. Um, yes. So this thing is not new. This is not. Oh no. This this situation. This is, is not, a systematic problem. There we go. This is not new. That yes. we're, we're. I mean, this is happening to a school near you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah this is ha- this is happening at your kid's school. Exactly. Yes. Right now. I just. I'm just saying though. I'm not gonna lie to you. If it would happen to me, I would not be snitched. But it didn't happen because I had a, a coach that I didn't know if it was a girl or a guy. So I just said you have a. I don't see why that's a problem. <laughs> is, that, is that weird? Junior. No, no. Okay, okay. we're okay. gonna have a talk. <laughs> I think just honestly, me? Junior, you need to write a book about this. Like, oh my oh, god! Yeah. Right yeah. Are you planning to like make a movie? Yeah, uh, I might be a teacher, but I'm illiterate. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, no, but, no. I mean, I would love to, but it's just too much. Somebody mm-hmm. said Denton takes his late eighties. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Rudy. No. Yeah. Also, uh, true man. I, th- I think this is again. This is an ongoing thing, and now we see more of it. And now they're trying to like make it normalize. This is not normal, ladies and gentlemen. This is not something that we can be like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna send my kid so you can mm-hmm. have sex with a teacher. That's a child you're having. Yes, it's, it's a, a child, child you're having. You're having sex with. Now, now here's here's a question, Junior. Do you think? Do you think this is more? It's more prevalent. Or we just know about, we just know about it more. Oh, y'all don't even know half of them. No, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. no, no. So, so you don't think These like people. this isn't a new thing. It's just that we're we're hearing about it more. There, there is it harder to cover up. Do you think that's what it is? I think it's covering up more. Yeah, yeah. I think it's being covered up more because I hit all the news media. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm friends with, with Deborah Ferguson. She's been at some of my cooking competitions, and mm-hmm. I can show you the pictures. Yeah, and her managers wouldn't want to pick it up. Mm. Uh, I've talked to Mark uh, Jack Fink from Channel Eleven. He talked to me for a second and didn't want to pick it up. None wow. of these new channels wanted to pick it up because they said, "How do we verify it?" I said, "Talk to the senator." 
talk to the council members. Exactly. They, they intook it in their viable people. I said, then you can talk to this certain parent, but that little girl, she's not going to come and talk because she's been threatened. Her life has been threatened. His life has been threatened. Yeah, so, so why would she come up and talk right. to you when mm -hmm. you can't guarantee her safety? Exactly. And she lives in the ghetto, okay? Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen to her? No, no, you're right. You know? Exactly. Again, but this is where more people, and this is, and, and I'm saying this to everybody, if you're watching us, listen to us, you have a responsibility. If a little girl is scared, we should all step up to protect this little girl. All of us. We all have, the, we all have that. We need to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your belief is. I don't care what you do. Right thing is right. Right is right. Right is and if right. If your daughter is going through that, or your son, you would want somebody to step up and do something. Even though I know you know, parents, you got to work. You know, again. But guess what? Who gives a shit if you have to work? That's your kid. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Your Who kid is your shit? first priority. Exactly. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I'm not understanding why this dude is just even still, you know, there. Exactly. You hurt someone's innocent. I mean, if I if you hear parents saying, "Oh, I have, I have to work," that is the worst excuse you in don't the need to be world. A parent. You mm -hmm. you're not. Yeah. Why you why the fuck are you a parent? Exactly. I mean, because these are these are our children. These there are our know. sons. That's these the are future. our daughters. These are our nieces. These are our nephews. These are our cousins. These there are our, like these are our, our neighbors' kids. Like these grandchildren. These are our grandchildren. Like wow. you know, these are these aren't. Just some random kids that we talk about, right? Like these are kids that are that are in our circle, correct? You know what I mean? Yes. And I don't, I don't know why, but it just, it just pisses me off that that you would have to, you would have to lose your job and then be unable to come back into education. Mm. Like that's, it just mind boggles me. It's like. It's like if somebody if somebody fired LeBron and was just like, "Nah, we we don't need we don't need LeBron because he scores too many points." Right. Like, we want teachers to advocate for students. Like that's what they do. Exactly. That's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> you said earlier they singled you out. I think there's the the, the whole solution to this is you know it's, it's stupid what I'm about to say, but gang it's, violence. Uh, no, I mean, no, no, <laughs> no. But was that sorry? Uh, I watched Fast and the Furious. Planet of the Apes, when he was showing the other uh, uh, the other monkeys with one stick, you could break, right? But when you get multiple sticks, it's harder to break, right? The whole thing is that if we come together, Community. they can't fire all of us. And if they did, well, they're going to have a hell of a you know time. So, I mean, all the teachers should come together and be like, yeah, we need to do something about this. Don't, And that's what's crazy, that everybody's just letting you take all. Yeah. You know, just the whole. Like, your colleagues, like, if you. I mean, think about what would have happened if your colleagues had your back on this one. If all your if all your colleagues at the school had your back on this one. There's oh, no man. way. No way that guy would have had his job. There's, there's no way. They were scared of getting terminated too. See? Everybody's scared. Because I went to UEA and there was like UEA, which is the teachers' union mm -hmm. uh, for educators. They didn't do nothing. They said, the only thing we can do is keep you from being fired. I said, yeah, but you can't stop the harassment. You can't stop them threatening me. You can't do anything to God, get them cops to stop. showing up in your yeah. off time. During my off time. Hands on the pistol. Like, you're really going to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, good guys, I brought mm -hmm. my gun too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Looks like we have a Mexican standoff here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only problem But is I'm Puerto Rican. Oh. <laughs> a Puerto that? Rican standoff. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a Puerto Rican? No, no. Puerto Rican said no. Come on, puppy. So, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that's what makes me mad that only you are taking up, you know, this. And no one else. I mean, again, people know about the story now. And then now people are listening to you over a lot of platforms. Mm -hmm. So everybody, if you're listening, you have the obligation to stand up with this man and help him out. Like, you know, with the job, teaching, and standing up for the little girl or the little girls. Mm. Not just them, though. If you see anybody All that's children. causing this uh, uh, harm to a child, you have to, you got to stand up for them. Because yes. there's too many of that now. Mm -hmm. and, and it's becoming to, like, I, I'm getting tired of changing the news, and there's another teacher with the student. There's another kid that got molested. In this, you know, again, enough it, with this sickness. This should not be normalized. No, it, it should not be normalized. There should not be there normalized. There you go. Exactly. Don't try to normalize yeah. it either. Exactly. People, you know, we know who you are. Try to normalize this. Well, uh, we're going to wind it down. Uh, Junior, last words? No, we can keep going a little bit more. Uh, we, uh, Are we going to keep going? I'm gonna keep oh, going fuck it. Thug life. So um, what's the next step? What do you plan to do? Like, what do you want to do? 
I want to go back to teaching, and I'm hoping yeah. somebody with Arlington ISD, has, you know, with the district, you know. If anybody will, out there listening. We'll be like, hey, you know, we need him, somebody like him, mm-hmm. you know, in our district that will take care of the students. And, and he's an awesome chef, you know, mm-hmm. because I did that for the kids. They never won competitions before, and as soon as I got there, we were winning competitions left and right, taking names. We beat North uh, every school, Northside right, Polytech. Right, right. <laughs> I went to Poly, yeah. but I'm we talking beat to you. Poly. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't beat me when I was there, though. There. <laughs> you ain't beat me while I was there, though. <laughs> finally, finally said, Chef, you can't enter in the entree competition because you win every year. I said, okay, well, let somebody else have a chance this year. That's that's basically how we get. I'm going to win there. this year. got a prison spread that's going to be fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, being back to teaching would be great for me. I would love to work for Arlington Independent School District or somewhere mm-hmm. nearby mm-hmm. Arlington. But other than that, I would never want to go back to Fort Worth Independent School District. There's too many crimes with children there. It's too big. And matter of fact, when you go to a teaching seminar, I remember I went to one, and they consider it a business and not so much of a educational wow. institution. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where it's about educating your kids. And in fact, they tell you it's in the top five of the businesses in Fort Worth. One in the top five. Did y'all know that? Mm-mm. Yeah, the school they, they shouldn't even be there. Yeah, like, why would yeah, you? it employs that many people? So I just mm. there's so much wrong with that district. Uh, and Scribner is the one that needs to go. Oh, hey, let's yeah. get it started, man. Yeah. Get him out, about Scribner. That. You got to go. But uh, you gotta go. do you still you keep go? contact you gotta go? with uh, the young ladies, the, the girls? No, I I don't. I was just a teacher for that season. I was at, just, but you mm-hmm. know what? That's I think that was the most beautiful thing you've done. That even though they're not your kids and you only saw them that one time, they're going to remember that. Mm-hmm. Oh, stuff yes. like that, I mean, you know what I mean? People and That stays with you. That, that stays with you because those are the stages where we're developing and we're mm-hmm. trying to decide who we want to be. Now, I still have students that keep in touch with me. Like, I got yeah. some students that went to the Army. One girl, she calls me her daughter. You know, or she considers herself my daughter. Mm-hmm. I got I got a student my first year there that I took in as my own student and uh, as my own son. He was, he was a student for my first year. Mm. And he wasn't going to graduate. His mom goes, would you take guardianship of him and take him to school? I was like, man, I already got four boys. Okay. I'll take your son too. Wow. And I've been raising him since then. And he's almost done with college. So, you know, it's like, it's like, I still have those that have, that have gone to church with me that we do still keep in contact with. That's beautiful. I think I mentioned to you a little bit of my teacher. It was the same way he took me under his wing and Mm -hmm. he taught me every day. And he, you know, shout out to Mr. Pete and Mr. Pete and uh, Steve Stevens. Also, you know, that was my teacher that, that, that taught me that, you know, took me under his wing. If it wasn't for him, my, my path was something else. It was different. Yes. But Mm -hmm. because of that change, you know, because he was in my life, I was, my past changed. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm here with you now having the conversations. Now you probably would have seen me in prison. (laughs) With the tattoo tears, though, like that. <laughs> nah, bro, they would have deported you back to Korea. Facts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Facts. You be uh, chilling with Kim, with Kim Jun. <laughs> Got you. But, uh, yeah, um, outside of that, dude, what about cooking? Do you see yourself hosting, like, um, you know, more teaching school, uh, teaching cooking, or mm-hmm. open uh, up a restaurant, maybe? I'm too old to open up a restaurant, but I'm not working for a restaurant, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, working for a restaurant somewhere. I'd love to get back into the culinary field. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I can see you being like I still have one more surgery, though. I have a hole in my heart, which I just found out in in May because I had a stroke in May. And when they had me in the hospital, they did one of those uh, scans and they put bubbles in your your heart to make sure you don't have any more clots from a stroke I had. Oh, like a tire. Yeah, I like a tire. <laughs> Put those bubbles over. <laughs> yeah, it's like a tire. Oh, was he? I'm, yeah. like, I'm, like, I'm drinking yeah. my drink and he said, like a tire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. yep. And they found a leak in my heart and they were like, man, you didn't die while you were in the Marine Corps fix because of that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a fix a flat? That, is that what they're going to do? That's fix. what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah, literally a patch in there. Yeah. Oh, see? They're going to patch up the hole like a fix a flat. Why is it throw the good gear right here? On the x ray. Sorry, bro. I've been hanging out with Jesus. <laughs> he does time. Well, uh, wow, that well, that is no man. I, I will go bring you some flowers in the in the hospital. Mm-hmm. We'll do a live show from your uh, 
Yeah, we do a live show from the hotel. Oh, yeah. I mean, from the hospital. <laughs> Come on, Junior, get off your <laughs> surgery. <laughs> exactly. Ah, I'm always a kidder. Look at him. But um, uh, I, I mentioned you earlier. You mentioned you helped. Is there any way people can, uh, if they want to donate to help homeless people? Are you still doing that? Or? Right now, we're not because of COVID. Okay. Yeah, there, there, it is too too bad right now. Mm-hmm. When we stopped, it was right when COVID hit, mm. and so it it hasn't kicked back in. I people have been going, but I'm just not healthy enough for yeah, me to go that makes sense. myself no, no, that to makes do a lot it. Of sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as soon as more people start getting vaccines and more we start getting it under control, I would mm-hmm. love to go back and do it again. But well, okay. count me in, man, or count us in. We yeah. definitely want to help and do more for the community. Um, well, if, do you want people to reach you at somewhere or? Social media wise, if they want to reach out, talk to you. Or... Yeah, Junior Alfred Ramirez at um, on Facebook. Facebook. You know, yeah. You want to reach the church? Mm-hmm. All right. What well, pastor? Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, where else? Yeah. So they they can reach you on on Facebook. That's about it. You okay. know, um, that's the only social media. Hey, only I reach me there. Up in there. Don't, yeah. don't call me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm with you. Well, what I'm about you, you brother? Uh, any last words? Um. Oh, check us out. Um, so, so we're we're on Facebook now, um, f- Facebook Live, obviously. Um, we're after I think we usually upload Sundays is where we're on all the other streaming, your your Amazon Music's, your uh, Audible. Also, I forgot to tell you, uh, Audible. Uh, we're on Google Cast. We're on Spotify. We're on all those other streaming platforms. So, if you you know. If you weren't able to reach us today, you can always reach our old episodes. Those are always always up and available. Um, YouTube's coming up here pretty soon, so uh, look out for that. That's going to be coming as well as our Patreon. So that way you can, because what we want to do is we want to keep it commercial free. We want to keep it free for the for the people and for the fans. So um, our Patreon's coming, so you'll be able to subscribe to us, uh, donate to us. Uh, uh, shout out to Jennifer. Uh, we appreciate uh, everything you've done. Um, shout out to Trent. Ah, Trent. He gave me he gave me the finger of love. Is what I call it. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure you you shout out in the in the comments and stuff like that. Is there anything that you want to discuss for our next episodes? Because uh, we're gonna be wrapping up. Uh, season one. We've been ten episodes. Mm-hmm. Ten episodes, brother. Ten. Episodes. We're going in. So we're gonna do season two. Things are gonna be a little different. So uh, expect a change. Expect some changes. Some awesome changes, and uh, as well as uh, streaming stuff like that. So um, we'll be on the lookout for that. It's coming. With that being said, I want to say thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chef Junior. Thank you for coming thank and ex- explaining and telling us. This- Amazing true story, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is something else that needs to be out there. And if you guys are listening, please do your part. Uh, if you see somebody doing wrong, step up and say something. Uh, help one another. Be kind. Peace. Don't be a dick. Yeah. They say I walk like a king. Talk like a king. You can.